Hey everyone, so last week we took a look at Gen 2 on a head-to-head -head with Pika Art. And in that video, I listed out a few things that I felt that Gen 2 was kind of lacking. Well, like a day after that video, Gen 2 released an update and we've got some game-changing AI video now. We're gonna dive into where I think this works best, where it still kind of falters, and ultimately what this all means for the future of film. Okay, let's jump in. So this is a video by a friend of the channel, Uncanny Harry on Twitter. Uh, when I saw this, it blew me away. Check it out. Say my name. So yeah, that caught me pretty off guard. And if you're a Breaking Bad fan, you've got all the feelings right now. Now, I should point out this was not wholly generated by Gen 2. There were additional workflow elements in it. I reached out to Harry to find out what they were, and they included a mid-journey image, wave to lip for the lip sync, a topaz upscale, and Roop for a deepfake. We're gonna take a look at Roop in a little bit as well. But first, let's take a look at some more incredible examples of Gen 2 outputs. Tatiana Sigluvia gives us this incredibly cinematic moment. To be honest, minus the resolution issues, if I saw this like scrolling past up my phone, I would think it was a brief moment from like an Oscar nominated film. Crazer Arts gives us this shot, which I'll admit doesn't have a ton of movement in it, but is very cinematic and emotive and kind of has a feeling, at least to me, of a high end, say like Apple TV show. Timmy gives us a pretty much straight up 80s anime. I mean, that is pretty remarkable and props to using the 4-3 aspect ratio for this. Now in the Pika video I did last week, I mentioned it would take any image reference and create video from it. For example, here is a mid journey image that I rolled up. I'd say woman in a coffee shop. And in Pika, it created, you know, video of that woman in a coffee shop. Whereas at the time, Gen 2 would only use that image as sort of an inspiration or an influence. Well, that is not the case anymore. And Gen 2 is actually outputting at a much higher resolution and frame rate. Gen 2 is outputting at a image resolution of 1792 by 1024 at 24 frames a second. Whereas Pika is running at 1024 by 576 at eight frames a second, which is pretty amazing. This is not to take anything away from Pika. I think they're doing some incredible work there. And I will say that on the Pika side, the face does lose some consistency, but we're gonna take a look at a fix to that coming up in just a bit. So the way Gen 2 is currently working is that you generate an image. Uh, for example, we're gonna use this that I had previously used for, and there was something on the channel that we were referencing the notebook for. I don't remember what it was, but whatever. It's the summer of Barbie, so all Gosling, no breaks. So you simply take that image and drag it in here. There is no prompting. So that is a thing. You can't actually direct the image. You're sort of left up to whatever Gen 2 decides to do with it. Now that said, it does a pretty good job of contextualizing your image and turning it into a moving image. For example, this is our notebook shot, which I'll admit is a bit of a gimme shot as, you know, from the image reference, what else are they gonna do? It's probably not gonna turn into a big song and dance number. It's not a Bollywood movie. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more when we get into some of the limitations. Pitching another softball, this is man fishing on a lake at magic hour, aspect ratio 16.9. And Gen 2 gives us this, which is pretty solid. There's some nice movement on the water, some nice movement on the clouds, obviously movement on our fishermen. There is a weird thing where it starts to fade out towards the end of the clip, but that also might be our fisherman just blacking out because he's been drinking beers all day and not properly hydrating. As another upgrade, a criticism that I had last week of Gen 2 was the fact that it was kind of locked in 916. That is not the case anymore. It will now take any aspect ratio that your image is in. For example, this is a cyberpunk woman in the snow. We've used her in the past in 916. Gen 2 gives us this, which is cool. I don't exactly know where that wall of death came from, but I am glad she stepped out of the way. In another 916 test with a similar image, Gen 2 ended up giving us this, uh, which kind of just has that sort of light parallaxing thing that you will tend to get a lot of in Gen 2. Here's another example uh, coming off of a mid-journey image rolled up in the aspect ratio of 1-1. One, one. I think this looks really great and not to harp on it, but I did happen to run this image in Pika last week. So for comparison's sake, there's clearly a lot more motion going on, but obviously a lot of the clarity and details have been kind of lost. If you're old enough to remember dubbing VHS tapes, uh, this kind of looks like a third or fourth generation copy. So I did have an interesting thought about blending the Pika output and the Gen 2 output. So this bottom layer here is the Gen 2 output. So I'm going to mute the Pika output, as you can see. So we're only looking at this and that is Gen 2. So now I'm going to flip it and this is just Pika. And then 
to the peak of video, I just put that into a lightened blend mode and reduced that down to 47%. And when you combine the two of them together, this is what you get. So it's sort of like having the best of both worlds. It's pretty interesting. One other really cool idea, again, since we can have any aspect ratio, is uh, Brian Fox ended up taking these famous photographs and running them into Gen 2 and basically bringing them to life. As time goes on, I do hope to see some sort of motion slider that will allow you to control the amount of movement within your video. And then obviously, ultimately, the ability to have a prompt alongside your image reference. I should say that one place that I think that Gen 2 really excels is with animated type images, such as this one, which is sort of a Darwin Cook inspired femme fatale at a bar, or the Samurai Jack inspired Samurai, which is leagues better than the one that we generated at the launch of Gen 2. That said, there are still movement issues. I think they'll get better as time goes on. But for now, I do think that Gen 2 occasionally gets confused Used when presented with an image that it doesn't know what to do with. For example, I rolled up cinematic still of James Bond at a bar and Midjourney gave us this, which props to Midjourney, it kind of looks like a nice combination between Daniel Craig and Roger Moore. It's a, this guy's a good Bond, I would, I would cast him. Gen 2 does give us a nice camera movement, but Bond's head is kind of bobble heading out. That said, did you know that the Vesper, the martini that Bond always orders, you know, the shaken, not stirred one, is actually three ounces of gin, one ounce of vodka, and a half ounce of Lilit Blanc. So it could be like Bond had five of them and just now has the spins. So yeah, things can be a bit of a grab bag when it comes to motion. For example, in taking some of the most iconic film shots of all time, for example, E.T. and Elliot, which I don't think works even with a soaring John Williams score. Although props to Gen 2 for the little bit of J.J. Abrams lens flare that it puts there, nice touch. Luke versus Vader almost works. There are some issues obviously with Luke's lightsaber and somebody just kind of walks in from the left side of the frame. I presume it's the emperor going like, he's your dad. Dancing does not work out so hot, although now I do want to take an image of Jenna Ortega in Wednesday and run that just to see if it actually comes up with the same dance sequence. I do think that the more subtle the shot, the better it works. There is some coherency issues, obviously, to the right and the left at the beginning of this shot, but overall, this actually isn't that bad. And given Jack's state of mind through the film, who's to say that this doesn't make sense? Alex and his droogs work out pretty well. Uh, there is some weird distortions in the facial features, but again, this is a case where I actually think that this just makes them that much more terrifying. When it comes to the facial distortions, one of the things that we can do is something that Uncanny Harry did in his Heisenberg video, is take our output video and head over to Replicate's root model. The link is down below. And when we run it with the image as a source, we get this, which looks a lot better. Roop actually does a really good job of improving the overall facial characteristics of a Gen 2 output. For example, I took this image of my face using Insight Face Swapper to cast me as Indiana Jones. Running that through Gen 2 gives us this, which isn't bad. I would say in the initial frames, it actually works out pretty well, but it kind of starts to lose something right around here. Taking that output, running it over to Roop and using just another photo of myself gets us this. There is still a bit of the bobblehead going on, but overall, I do think it's an improvement over the initial Gen 2 output. So while I know that there is definitely a part of the viewership that is looking at this and saying like, eh, it's still too early. And I get that there's a part that kind of makes this all feel like it's the photos in a Harry Potter newspaper. That reminds me, I gotta resubscribe to the Dove X Twals. But this is all moving very quickly and in a lot of directions, but eventually these roads are going to meet. So while I'm playing around with Gen 2 and a face swapper, Fable Studio is creating full AI generated South Park episodes. I did forget to mention in that South Park video that AI Showrunner allows you to actually cast yourself in a South Park episode as well. So we're starting to get a real look at what many have predicted to be the future of personalized entertainment. Just a few months ago, Avengers director Joe Russo predicted that we would be seeing fully AI generated movies within two years. I'll admit at the time I had some doubts about that, but then I remembered Joe Russo is a guy that's made a few billion dollar movies and I am a guy with a YouTube channel. Point being that Joe Russo is in a class of filmmakers who have probably seen technology in development that has not filtered down to us. And looking at all the threads of the current AI technology, I mean, to be honest, two years does not sound unreasonable. I would be remiss to say that these are obviously a lot of the issues that the Screen Actors Guild are currently striking against. I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but please do let me know how you feel about that in the comments below. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.